What kind of challenges does Joe Burrow present? Yeah, he's a really good player. You know, he's very complete. He's a guy that uh, sees downfield and uh, he's got good pocket presence. You know, he's a son of a long time successful college defensive coordinator. So he's lived around defenses. He knows how they think. You know, he's just a really good young player. Jamar Chase is a challenge twofold, both off the line, but then he looks like he and Burrow have some chemistry when plays break down as well, trying to stay sticky with him. Yeah, really good point. Fair question. Uh, one, you got to stay on top of this guy. You can't give him the, the long ball in this game. And then when the play breaks down, especially, you know, in, in the red zone or high red zone, you know, they, they have a little bit of magic where they, they find and they connect. So we got to be on our on, on really got to be on point there. Callahan obviously hasn't played since week eight. Uh, what does he have to kind of take on in this game to contain that passing attack? Well, we brought him back, you know, at a very good pace, and he was dressed last week ready to play. So I think it's a bit, will be a very smooth transition. It's a good time to get him. You know, they have a really good uh, group of three receivers that are they evenly distribute the ball, and they're very productive. So we'll need all our cover guys. We just talked about the team honoring Wade Harmon for his uh, yeah. cancer battle. How much respect did you gain for him kind of over the last few months as you saw him hold his responsibilities as he was going through that? Yeah, it just adds. You know, he's a highly respected coach for many years in this league. But this is just one more thing that, uh, you know, he put the team first and we didn't know much about it. So, you know, that, that speaks volumes to Wade. Green Jackson, what kind of uh, similarities do you see between him, the safety, and him, the corner, and just as, as he's gotten older here these last three years? You know, you just look over the years, you know, there's, there's a, a few guys that play corner and nickel at a very high level, you know, like a Rod Woodson, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of them. I can't think of them all right now. But they use all those experiences and they transfer right away. Tyrone Braxton was a really good one for the Denver Broncos. And when he went inside, you know, he took his style of play and was very effective. So, um, you know, it just, it, it just, it's a pleasure as a coach when you have a guy because you know what he's bringing with you. But the one thing that stands out about um, Kareem is his toughness. You know, there's not many guys that can pack that kind of punch. And he's bringing the same punch regardless of the situation. You know, every week, and his teammates know it, and, and they feed off of that. But there probably was a lot of fans who weren't necessarily thinking through the first seven weeks of the season that Baron Browning was going to be the type of player he hadn't really gotten on the field. Um, but what what was going on behind the scenes that gave you guys faith that when he did get in there, like he did in Week Eight, and has started since, that he was going to be kind of ready for that opportunity? Yeah, we really didn't know. But as you know, the season went on. You know, if it w- would have went as scheduled, he wouldn't be on the field. But, you know, it's a credit to, you know, two, two factors. You know, uh, Reggie Herring, you know, he's been managing that position, you know, all season long. And then our veteran players at all levels, you know. Uh, Josie Jules, you know, nobody, nobody sees Josie. You know, he's here at every practice, every game, every bus ride supporting that group and staying ready, you know. And it's Justin Simmons and Kareem talking with him and forming a relationship. It's, it's everybody. Thanks, Sid. Appreciate it. Great